Sojourners Along the Way began a year ago this season. Our very first program dealt with Thanksgiving, and this program is also going to, to talk about Thanksgiving. I want you to notice, I am wearing pink, and pink has been designated as a color for cancer. And there are other colors, purple, and this month, November, has been dedicated as the No Shave Month. And I would like to encourage our viewing audience, the men, you get people to donate to, to the cause. Hopefully we can come up with a cure. I was really sad to hear the statistics that breast cancer is the sixth leading cause of death in women in our nation. This ought not to be. So let me put in a plug, please. You can watch Sojourners Along the Way on YouTube. You can see which programs deal with health issues. And just because the title may be about the heart or Alzheimer's, the information is what we call a transferable skill. You can watch those programs and apply whatever information would be helpful in whatever you're dealing with. We can, we can have success in our health. I'm hesitating because I'm thinking of sharing a personal story with you. Um, and since I think it is an illustration of what can be done, I, I will. One of my checkups with my doctor, she heard something in one of my arteries. And so I went for an ultrasound. Now, I had changed my eating patterns and I am still working on that. I am an advocate for plant-based, but I'm not just an advocate for it, I'm doing it. I have cut out many things, many, many things from my eating. And if I could get rid of the chocolate, I would probably do a lot better. But I don't buy chocolate. Just So if you ever see me, please don't offer me chocolate. It's really hard for me to resist. But when I was having the ultrasound done, I could see, I could see the image on their TV and it looked really good. There was only one tiny, tiny little spot in my artery. And I was told that the person had never seen an artery as clean as mine. I think that is a testimony of how plant-based living works. This past year has been a year that I have learned so much about good health. I again want to put in a plug for Dr. Neil Bernard, who has a book that it's addressing diabetes, but it's also good for lots of other things. And Dr. Michael Gregor, both of these doctors are nationally known and becoming internationally known. Please do what you can to get in, into better health. And also, let's join together, as I said, and let's help fight cancer. Today's program is focusing on a national holiday and we're going to approach it from a couple of different ways. I have three very, very precious, precious, precious guests that you're going to be introduced to. Two of them have been on the program in the past and one is brand new and I'm going to let them show you their story. What is Thanksgiving? I would like to introduce us three. I'm Faith. I'm Grace. And I'm John. Hey guys. Hi. And we are doing these to get ready for Thanksgiving. And um, I will start out by saying what I am thankful for. Um, one thing I'm thankful for is my family. Um, another thing I am thankful for is my friends and my food and my pets and my home. I'm thankful for my family, house, and our food, my dog. I'm thankful for my school, um, the education it provides 
uh, first priority is I'm thankful for the God in heaven um, and stuff, the, the ability to live on this earth. We are going to write in these what we are thankful for and the most, the priority you should be most thankful for is your church and um, Jesus because he's the one who made us and your church helps you understand more about Jesus. I'm making my turkey cough. And it is made out of my hand. And it's really colored. I would actually like to talk about the traditions we do at Thanksgiving. Usually we go over to my aunt's house and wait for the, all the guests that are coming to arrive. And then we say our grace. And then um, we eat. And afterwards, some kids go out and play. And while the adults stay in and play games, like board games, like apples to apples, checkers, and stuff. I'm also going to talk to talk about uh, our family traditions. We usually invite family and friends, and my mom makes her um, angel eggs, and they are really good. And my dad um, comes home with the turkey, and um, when everybody when everybody comes we talk we say our prayers and um we also say what we're thankful for and um we eat and then the uh, the kids which is usually just me and grace we go play and the adults talk a lot Um, one thing that I forgot to mention about the, um, tradition, uh, was last year, my, it was either last year or two years ago, <coughs> my aunt <coughs> gave each person a, um, Sharpie marker and a piece of paper and we wrote down the, um, things that we were thankful for. And everybody took turns reading them. And at school, we also have um, a Thanksgiving party, and we also write what we're thankful for. And um, last year, we put it in a basket and pulled it out. And we had to write our name on it, and um, whatever thing it was, we had to say why we were thankful for it and why it's special to you. And um, we also eat um, cookies. And um, chips and uh, vegetables and fruits and dips. And um, we had a lot of fun. And after the party, we actually had a very fun dance party. Um, at school, we have a Thanksgiving. Thank 
giving food for um, and we have pumpkin pie and mush. Um, one thing that we did in school, I'm now in fifth, but when we were in first, uh, we went around to the different classrooms. In one classroom, we talked a little bit about Thanksgiving, and then uh, we put um, milk cream from like half and half, put marbles in it, and put them in little containers, and then shift them up to make our own butter. Then in other classes, we made homemade whipped cream. And, and then in um, my homeroom, we um, the kids made um, the kids made um, like made like the pumpkin pie, and then Miss Burrow's class put the um, whipped cream on the actual pie, and we used the butter to put on like buns and stuff that um, that our teachers had brought. Um, we also, um, in my second grade class, we, um, put pumpkin, we put the pumpkin pie crust into the, uh, freezer, um, the day before we had our Thanksgiving party, and then we took it out, and he bought um, the pumpkin pie mix for to make pumpkin <coughs> pie and he made it while we were at lunch and we um, took whipped cream and put it on the top. It was about this big. We put whipped cream on the top and then we got to help cut it and eat it and then another time we had a pumpkin, and we had to guess how much it weighed. And I guessed um, 200 pounds, and it weighed um, 203, so I was the closest. Um, during like the holidays like this, uh, since it gets colder, I uh, when um, I'm out, I ask my Sometimes I ask my uncle if we can borrow his rake so we can make leaf piles. Faith? Um, we, one time, um, it was close to Thanksgiving, me and my dad and my mom and my little sister went to the park and we took lots of leaves and made a big leaf pile and me and my little sister jumped into the leaf pile and then um, we snuck up behind my dad and mom because they were huddled together because they were cold and we threw leaves on top of their heads and then dad started chasing after us with a bunch of the leaves. That's all that I have to say. And um, we also love celebrating Thanksgiving and it's not just all about having the feast and um, the giving and the getting. Um, it is about giving thanks to Jesus because he made um, the world and he made you and um that's the reason you should be thankful and the pilgrims went to a another land to worship jesus because they couldn't in their old land that's about it we all have to say so now we're going to show you the um, turkeys that we made now that we've done a little more progress on them. This is mine. It's a little sighted. Now, uh, Grace, do you want to show your turkey? Yep. Yeah. This is my turkey. And this is mine. Thanksgiving. When you hear that word, what comes to mind? Is the first thing that you think of turkey? 
is the first thing you think of. Lots and lots of food on a table. Everybody gathering around that table for a special meal. Well, let's look at the word Thanksgiving. The word Thanksgiving is a very special word. It's called a compound word because if you look at it, you can see of the word thanks. There's one. And then giving. And I wrote those words separately so we can look at them for a little bit. Thanksgiving. Why did it get the name Thanksgiving? What answers did you come up with? Thanksgiving. Let's look at it the way that it of its original intention. And in our government, in our legal documents, it's always good to go back to the original documents, primary sources. The intention was to give thanks. Giving thanks is very powerful. Very powerful. And, and this is something that I would like to encourage our viewing audience again. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, whatever adult is in the life of a child, please help your child or children learn to give thanks. Giving thanks. That, it forms a wonderful, wonderful attitude. But the question is, giving thanks, it's actually two questions. Same exact word, but one difference. The word is who and who. Who with a little w and who with a capital W. Who? Who do you give thanks to? Well, we should be giving thanks to everybody. That's little w. Okay? Everybody in your life. We need to learn to find things to say thank you for and to give thanks. But the first Thanksgiving, they were looking at a who with a capital W. Who is that who? They were giving thanks to God. The pilgrims came here for the explicit purpose to thank God according to the dictates of their minds. Their conscience is the way that it is written. Thanksgiving is games. Families and friends may play outside or go to a game. Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving plays. There are plays about pilgrims and Indians who help them. Thanksgiving is parties, parades. There are floats, bands, and big balloons. Thanksgiving is sharing and remembering others. Thanksgiving is giving thanks for many blessings. Thank you. At the end, that is the end of our Thanksgiving is story by Gail Gibbons. This is called The Adventurous Life of Miles Standish and the Amazing but True Survival Story of Plymouth Colony. They went through a horrendous time. They, they were not farmers. They were not in any way at all prepared to live off the land. The majority of the people that came to the United States before it was the United States were business people, merchants. They, they had a background from the upper class. They had to learn a lot. But why were they willing to do that? Because they were thankful to God and they wanted to give thanks to God. 
That's what Thanksgiving is really all about. And I hope that this Thanksgiving Day, you'll start a new tradition if you don't already have it. But go around the table and ask everybody, what's something you're thankful for? You saw the children. They made one of those very famous turkeys out of their hands, and they gave things that they were thankful for, what each one of their fingers represented. Let's help this culture to get back where it was when it was a time of saying thank you and oh yes and please and please forgive me and I'm sorry. Those words have been disappearing from our vocabulary and Sojourners along the way would like to encourage you to reincorporate them. Something fun to do is to write the word Thanksgiving Day at the top of a piece of paper and then try and find out as many words as you can make out of Thanksgiving Day. And some of the words that I have is hey. Thanksgiving Day Hank Sank Has Stink Say K Hand Ink And Think King Ding Kind and Tank. Some of the words I have is day, Thanksgiving, thanks, giving, sad, and hand, sand, van, at, as, ask, say, in, sing, king, Thing and some of the words I have is day, hey, think, think, giving, ink, king, kind, that, nay, said, things, thing, thinks, think, thinks, not, sad, as, ding, say, and, and. Tank, tanks, Hank, and Sin. The University of Illinois has an interactive website, and it's a lot of fun, I think. An easy way to get to the site is to go do a search for Plymouth Colony Archives Project. It looks like rooms or in a large building, and if you click on one of those titles, it will give you different list of things. September 16, 1620, a group of people called pilgrims left in England because King James, I did not permit re religious freedom, he said. Everyone has to belong to the Church of England. The pilgrims boarded a ship called the Mayflower and set sail for America. They sailed for 66 days over choppy waters and sometimes through stormy weather. On November 21st, 1620, two months later, the pilgrims arrived in America. They landed at Plymouth Rock in Plymouth, Massachusetts. My passage is called uh, Native Americans. Pull it one. The pilgrims met a friendly Native American named Squanto. He helped the pilgrims and Native Americans become friends. The Native Americans taught the pilgrims how to live in the wilderness. They got pilgrims seeds for corn and taught them how to plant crops for food. They also taught the pilgrims how to hunt and fish for food. We're not going to read this book. We're going to do something special with it. And my little friend, my special little friend, is going to tell you the title. P is for Pilgrim, a Thanksgiving alphabet. Great job. All right. Give me a letter. G. G. A great creator gives the gift of all things. Gardens of nature and gratitude sings. What's a, the great, great creator? Do you know who that is? Yes. Who? God. Oh, you are so good. Give me five. I like that. Good job. All right, pick another letter. R. This says all races. The word races starts with the letter R. All races in our republic, in our nation, respect each other's rights and responsibilities. 
our forefathers pledged all citizens are entitled to peace, refuge, and tranquility. Would you pick another letter, please? A. Across the Atlantic Ocean, a lone ship on a vast sea, ablaze with new hope, all praying to be free. Pick another letter. C. Good choice. Corn was very important. The husks were woven into baskets, sleeping mats, and coarse husk dolls. Corn cobs were used for fuel. Pick another letter. E. This tells us a little bit about a woman and what one woman was able to do. I think that's wonderful. And it also is encouraging that anybody, one person, can make a huge difference. Editor, educator, and writer, embracing a strong determination, Sarah Hale petitioned for a day of thanksgiving in our nation. Can you imagine that one person? was able to get the Thanksgiving to be a national holiday for the whole country. She worked for 15 years writing letters and encouraging other women to write letters asking for a national day of gratitude to... God. Yes, a gratitude to God. Finally, President Lincoln approved and issued his Thanksgiving proclamation in 1863. Why did I pick those five letters? Because it's someone's name. And whose name is that? Mine. It's your name, yes. And what's special about your name? It, uh, it's named after a song. Yeah, you were named after a wonderful, tremendous song. And what is that song? Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. And you know why else I liked having you be the one to come and do this? Why? Why? Why do you think? Um, because the name is special? Yeah, because the name's special. And what should we do before we eat? Pray. Yeah. And do you know what that word, that prayer is called? It has a special name. Grace. Yeah, it's called Grace, just like your name. And Thanksgiving would be a tremendous time when you're gathered around that wonderful feast to give thanks to God and to offer grace. Thank you. They're praying because they had a safe landing and they're praying to Jesus. This is a picture of a of family and friends praying before they eat their Thanksgiving feast. And they are praying that to bless the food and to let them have a great day on Thanksgiving. Well, my picture is showing them after they landed. And, and if you can see in the far left corner, you can see the Indian by the tree. Uh, far right, you can kind of see... Uh, the ship, and just down below, you can kind of see a man carrying sick, grown adult. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Now thank we all, our God, with heart and hands and voices, who who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. Now we're going to talk about this picture. It is about the pilgrims having their feast. There is a woman and her child, and I think the child has a little doll or something. That man over there, he is praying and then there's a fire and some Indians over here. And something to say? I've lost something. Grace? And they are eating their Thanksgiving dinner. And the Indians might be hunting or listening. And remember, it's always important to say grace before you eat any meal. I agree with important that. Important or not. 
What's your guys' favorite part about the picture? Turkey. <laughs> turkey! I like the Indians and the wildfire in the corner. Yeah, that, that right there. And then the beautiful sky and... Yeah, you, every, can't, yeah. Tell, you, you can't tell where the ocean meets the sky. Yeah, and you can't tell if it's like sunset or if the sun's just about to rise. Rise or it's midday. You can't yeah. really tell because it's just a beautiful shade of kind of like purplish and pink and the white in there and a little bit of blue. And we all have one thing to be thankful for, and that thing is... Jesus. Yes, because he is the one who created this world and us. It's giving thanks to God because he created um, our world and um, us. And remember, he created you. He's watching you and he's watching all of us and he right loves now. everyone. And right now. Thank you. The reason the children were doing these things was to help our viewing audience. I'm hoping in the future to have teachers as my guests. I asked them all the same question. What is the number one thing you would like to tell our viewing audience that will help our children in this nation educationally? Every single one, and they were being asked this without somebody else being there, but they all gave the same answer. And that answer is read to the children. So the activities you saw with the children are ideas of what you can do, and it'll be twofold. One, it will be helping them to learn to be thankful, to be grateful, to say thank you. And two, we want to plug into the children's creativity. Children are losing that nowadays. They don't know what to do or how to do things unless it happens to be like this. And we don't want them just going like that. We want them to engage their brain. So please, these are just some ideas of things you can do. And it doesn't have to be just Thanksgiving. Taking a picture and showing a picture to a child and saying, what do you see? And having them describe that picture to you. Help them. Help them. There's a magazine, I think it's called Highlights, and they would have hidden pictures inside a picture and you had to find the objects inside. That's great because it's helping children to look, to see, not just to take it in and it doesn't do anything or go anyplace. As an educator, that is extremely important to me. I want to see this nation gain back what it has lost over the past. We have to make education a priority in our nation. Ask them some questions. What colors are they? What are they doing? How do you think they feel? Why do you think they're doing that? Ask them questions that will lead them to be able to express what they're thinking and be able to express what they're viewing. Have the children taking a word and seeing how many words you can find in that one word. That also engages the child's mind and it helps them to develop their creativity. It helps them to become more analytical and that's something that we need in our country today. Doing an acrostic is another fun thing you can do with kids. You take the word Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving Day. That gives them a couple of extra words because by the rules you're only supposed to use the letter from the word the number of times it exists. In Thanksgiving, you could use a word that has two G's and two I's because in the word Thanksgiving it has two G's and two I's. And if you use Thanksgiving Day, then you could write words that have two A's. Then you take the letters and you, you write down the side of one page the letters from the words. Then you come up with a word or a phrase or a sentence that starts with that first letter. This is another great way to help children's creativity and to develop their imagination. Challenge your child. Challenge the children in your lives. 
to do creative things. You can take the acrostics that you do with the children and make them into a bookmark and then that will be a great visual for them that this is something they did. Kids like to have their work recognized. They like to be told, great job. Let's do something else like that. Please, again, be encouraging to the kids. Get involved. Help them. And please remember what the teachers said. Reading to the children is the number one thing that will help them educationally. Several years ago, I had the opportunity to do a radio program for WCVZ out of Zanesville. One of the people that I interviewed was an author. His name is William J. Federer. And he is the author of the book, America's God and Country, an encyclopedia of quotations. And that is exactly what this book is. It is an encyclopedia of quotations from our government, from our foreparents, from leading individuals, famous individuals. It is a tremendous, tremendous book. And it's a great way to help find out our history. What do our documents say? It was said that if you tell a lie loud enough and long enough, people will believe it. There is a move to try to change our history. I am very thankful for William J. Federer, and you can find this book online. You can also um, listen. He does some radio programs, so you can find him that way. And it is possible to get him in Athens, Ohio, southeastern Ohio, to listen to the programs. And I hope you will. I think it's called America's Minute. Um, very, very knowledgeable individual, lots of good information. And I, again, he, for this book, he took a lot of our original documents, things that you'd have to hunt for, and he put them all together in one book. Now, this is going back to the Continental Congress. And I'm going to read portions. I'm not going to read everything because it gets kind of lengthy. But Continental Congress, September 11th, 1777. Long time ago. Approved and recommended to the people that 20,000 copies of the Holy Bible be imported from other sources. This was in response to the shortage of Bibles in America caused by the Revolutionary War interrupting trade with England. The chaplain of Congress, Patrick Allison, so I like his name, Patrick, brought the matter to the attention of Congress, who assigned it to a special congregational committee, which reported, the use of the Bible, and I'm quoting, the use of the Bible is so universal and its importance so great that your committee refers the above to the consideration of Congress. And if Congress shall not think it expedient to order the importation of types and paper, the committee recommends that Congress will order the Committee of Commerce to import 20,000 Bibles from Holland, Scotland, or elsewhere into the different parts of the states of the Union. Whereupon it is resolved according to direct said Committee of Commerce to import 20,000 copies of the Bible. Now, 20,000 copies today may not sound like a lot, but you have to remember this is back in 1777. The population in this country was not that large. That would have been a nice size. And who was going to pay for it? Our government. We keep hearing the word separation of church and state. And there's a lie that has been attached to that. It is now trying to be represented by separate the church, separate the state. Keep them separate. There should be no mixing of the two. Original intention. What was it? That it was in a private letter from Thomas Jefferson to his wife. 
Now you have to again think about why did these people come here to this new world, this new learn land in the first place? They came for the explicit purpose of having freedom. Freedom to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience, of their minds. In some state constitutions, the original state constitution, and I forget whether it's North Carolina or South Carolina, but they're not the only one. Others explicitly state, they specifically said, in order to be a politician in that state, you must be a Christian. And it was neither North Carolina or South Carolina that said, you must name Jesus as your Lord in order to be a politician. They're trying to change our history. They're trying to remove God. Why? Why? Another one. Again, Continental Congress, November 1st, 1777, issued the first national proclamation of thanksgiving to all colonies as a result of their victory at Saratoga. And this is rather lengthy, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it starts out, for as much as it is the indispensable duty of all men and women to adore the superintending providence of Almighty God, to acknowledge with gratitude their obligation to God for benefits received, and to implore such further blessing as they stand in need of, and it give, having pleased God in God's abundant mercy, not only to continue to us the innumerable bounties of God's common providence, to smile upon us. It is therefore recommended to the legislative or executive powers of these United States to set apart Thursday, the 18th day of December next, for this solemn thanksgiving and praise, that with one heart and one voice the good people may express the grateful feelings of their hearts and consecrate themselves to the service of their divine benefactor. And it goes on, it goes on, and it talks about how we are to be thankful and for the working of God in this land. That is the roots of this nation. We have a lot to be thankful for. And who, with a capital W, should we be giving thanks to? To God. There's at least 20 different references to Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving Day. Um, the next one, again, from Con uh, Continental Congress, October 18, 1780, issued a proclamation for a day of public thanksgiving and prayer. This came after the revealing and subsequent deliverance from Benedict Arnold's plot to betray General George Washington and his troops to the British. And again, it starts out, Whereas it has pleased Almighty God, the Father of all mercies. And then it goes on and talks about how there's a need to be giving thanks. Thanksgiving. Think about that word. As I said, it's a compound word. Two words taken together to make a new word. Thanks, giving, giving of thanks. I want you to see. This is from our very foundation, the Continental Congress. Our foreparents had the foresight to say that we need to remember God. In fact, at Ohio University, one of the gates of Ohio University is from the land ordinance of, I believe it's 1776. I will have to check on that. But it starts out, religion, morality, and education being so, and I'm paraphrasing, being so important for good government shall forever be encouraged. That's right here in Athens, Ohio. The land ordinance 
was one of our primary documents. In fact, it's one of the top three important documents of this nation, and it has been used as the foundation for many other documents, not just in the United States, but in other countries also. I think we have a lot to be thankful for. Now this one starts out, Congress of the United States of America, September 25th, 1789, unanimously approved a revolution asking President George Washington to proclaim a national day of thanksgiving. Friday, September 25th, 1789, day of thanksgiving resolved that a, peer, a joint committee of both houses isn't that nice? Wouldn't it be nice for us to be able to say that we are having um, a unanimous decision from both houses today? This was back in 1789, that a joint committee of both houses be directed to wait upon the President of the United States to request that he recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a constitution of government for their safety and happiness. That sounds like it was the original intent to include God in the foundation of this country. Please, Check out this book. Again, the title is America's God and Country, Encyclopedia of Quotations by William J. Federer. I think I will select one more at this time. I'd like to read many, many more to you because it is so powerful. You know, look for primary sources. When you are doing research, you're always asked for documentation, documentation, and to be able to document where your documentation came from. On November 8, 1783, Governor John Hancock from Boston, Massachusetts issued a proclamation for a day of Thanksgiving to celebrate the victorious conclusion of the Revolutionary War. And again, it was an expression of thanksgiving. It wasn't until Abraham Lincoln that a national day was dedicated, and that is what we are celebrating now, our Thanksgiving holiday. It's a wonderful, wonderful holiday, and I hope Thanksgiving will always be special to you. And I hope that you will incorporate some of the things that we have talked about giving thanks, giving thanks on a daily basis to the people in your life, remembering that you don't want to wait. You don't want to wait until they're gone and then have regrets, saying, oh, I wish I had told them. I wish I had told them how much I loved them. I wish I had told them that I was thankful and the things that you're thankful for. Find the people in your life to give thanks to and do it to them. Say thank you to them. And then the big one, giving thanks to God. The air that we breathe all around us, the beauty of nature. And I love, if you have never been to Athens County, let me encourage you, it is worth coming here, especially in autumn, because the trees, are vibrant. They're brilliant in colors, reds, oranges, yellows. The hillside explodes with a display of beauty colors. I love autumn in Athens County. And if you time it right, those of you that are hunters, as long as you eat the meat, I'm in favor of hunting because I know that some families count on that meat for their winter food. Athens County is also a good place for hunting. Please be safe, okay? Don't do anything foolish. No hunting accidents, okay? But Athens County is a wonderful, wonderful place. 
and I am very thankful that I have the opportunity to live in Athens County, Ohio. Thanksgiving. There are a number of songs that have been written about giving thanks, Thanksgiving, and I'm just going to give you a couple. I did hear from our viewing audience members that they wanted me to do more singing, and that just blessed my heart when they said that, so that's a big thank you to them. So here, these songs are for you. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ, God's Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks with a holy heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ, God's Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for you. Give thanks. And the reason that we can do those things, the song says, in everything, not for everything. When my mom died as a result of a fatal car accident, I was not thankful for the car accident. But I was thankful because I knew where my mother was going and that I would once again get to see her. And God used that because when I worked in China the first time that I went there, I was talking with one of my students that we had become friends, and, and I was showing her some poems that my niece had written to deal with my mother's death. And as I was showing those poems to the, the, my student friend, I started crying. And she said, oh, you love your family. And I said, yes, I love my mother very much. I called my mom a saint because she was such a wonderful, wonderful person. And she said, oh, we've been taught that in the United States, families don't love each other. And that's why there's so many divorces and people don't talk to each other. And I said, yeah, that does happen. But not every family, not everyone. There's a lot of love in the United States. In everything, give thanks. Because we don't know how God will use those circumstances. What looks like a bad thing to us can be turned around and can be used by God to help our lives, to help us to become better people. And that's my goal in life. I want to become the best person I can. And I know, I know I fall flat on my face. I know I make lots of mistakes. But I sure am glad for God's forgiveness. So in everything, I give thanks because I know God has promised to use everything. The second song talks about let the weak say they are strong. That sounds like an oxymoron, but it really isn't. Because scripture teaches us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
God gives us strength for the things that we are going through. God gives us strength for what we have need of. And I'm very thankful for that because I've been through a lot of different things that I wish if I could have chosen, I wouldn't have done it. But hindsight shows me that I learned a great deal by those hard situations when I did feel utterly helpless, utterly weak, but God carried me through. In fact, there's a poem that um, talks about footsteps in the sand and how there were two sets of footprints, but at different times there were one set of footprints and then two sets again, and then one set, and then two. And this was a discussion between an individual and Jesus. And, he, and the person looked and said, Jesus, why? Why, when I was going through the hardest things in my life, did you leave me? You deserted me. There were two sets, and we were walking together. And then when I went through all those difficult times, there's only one. Why did you let me go by myself? And Jesus said to the person, it was at those times that I carried you. God has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. When we're going through our difficulties, no matter what situation you're in now, God is there and wants to help you. And then it also says, let the poor say they are rich. Again, that sounds like another oxymoron, but it's not. Because the scripture also promises us in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 17. It says, My God shall supply all of your needs according to God's riches and glory through Christ Jesus. How God does that, we've got to be looking and seeing the hand of God. God gets a lot of bad rap. A lot of people say, oh, there's, there's no God. I, I'm with a group of people that um, they even write about things like that. But let me ask you, have you ever thought about the birth of a baby? Have you ever thought about how your eye blinks? Or how about when a f tooth falls out and another tooth comes in? Are these coincidences? I say no. It's by design. And if there's design, then there's a designer. And I'd like to say there's a creator. And I name that creator as God. And God cares about every situation in your life. So in everything, give thanks. And to know that God is there. Jesus is carrying you through the difficult times in your life. Happy Thanksgiving.